Hey guys, we're back. It's another early morning ride with Rich. It's much darker in the morning now than it used to be. It just tells me uh, fall is coming. It was a very wet ride this time out. A lot of overnight rain. Had some mechanical issues. I burned myself. And I had a mental breakdown. It was a lot of fun. Got to the parking area at Clough State Park nice and early. A little two-stroke plume there for you. The mental breakdown was far, far away. I had no idea what was coming for me. Quick blast out on the transfer road. Uh, everything seemed wet, but not terribly, terribly bad. We were still joking about stuff. They groomed it. <clears throat> Do you think they dried off the uh, all the puddles? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just haven't gotten to that section yet. I'm out on the 390 today. A uh, big, torquey, four-stroke, heavy, heavier than my two-strokes. Uh, turned out not to be a great choice, but early on I saw these puddles and I thought, yeah, I'm on the big 400. I'm going to wheelie over it. Here we go. Whoop. Disappointingly, it looks like nothing on the replay, but it was totally terrifying. I really did think I was going to launch myself into the woods. See, I'm a little bit chastened by the big torque experience. Uh, and then coming up here, oh, wait, wait, what's this? Oh, there's a tree blocking the trail. I let the video run a little bit here because you can see from the uh, cut of the trail that Rich, although he's very tall, actually is having a little trouble touching the ground. I <laughs> thought that was funny because that's kind of like what it's like for me all the time. I'll find my way through the woods here, uh, see what we got. Wow. Well, this is on film. Obviously off to a really strong start to the day here. The further we got in, the wetter it was. <laughs> the, the roots were brutal. They're always a little difficult, a little tricky, a little bit of a test. But today they were just as slick as could be, which is what we talked about. Don't follow <clears throat> Rich. Can't sit down, my tailbone still hurts. Well, I mean, I can sit down, but it's like an appropriate sitting down, like half a cheek. All right, onto the loop. This is the river loop, motorcycles only, no ATVs to chew up the trails, so it's a really nice single track. It doesn't always look like this. Uh, we ride it all year, and when we come in the winter, uh, it's wet, but totally different. This is basically exactly the same point on the trail, but with no leaves and some snow. Still wet though. All right, back to August. No snow, uh, plenty of water, and a little bit of this silty, sandy mud stuff. Pretty tricky to ride. All those roots, you can see they're nice and dark. It means they're slick as could be. I stopped for a second up here. I thought I saw something in the woods, a deer maybe. I just wanted to see what, what it could be. Let's just turn off the, what, what is that? Uh, oh. <laughs> That's oh, rich. I guess he had a little adventure. You know, I think it's bad karma to honk at people on the trail, uh, and, and I believe that because. I, 20 seconds later, I put myself through this puddle. Still pretty early in the ride, but I had kind of gathered that maybe I brought the wrong bike for today. I was feeling out of sorts, which I started talking about here. I think actually the bars are a little far forward. 
big adjustment. And uh, not too far, I think. I think in reality, it wasn't so much the bars as the rider's skill level. But I also had a little trouble with the starter today. Uh, I think the clutch wasn't totally engaging, so it just was tough to get going. Totally annoying. I came through that section before we got into the loop, and I was like, oh, I was trying to go around a puddle. And I came down to the next one, and it was... Oh, yeah, my, my, I'm wet. Yeah, fuck it. Hard to say. I mean, if the clutch isn't fully engaged in it, it's got that extra, you know what I mean? Then it's yeah. going to be a real drain on the battery. Why, did you have to kick it? No, that'd still be back there if I had to kick it. Oh, all right. You would be like, just, hey, Rich. I'd here. just be like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm not starting it. this way I really do think those smart ass remarks are bad karma it's definitely how it worked out today So the combination of switching to this bike and these really tricky conditions, a little bit of extra weight, this thing probably weighs about 30 pounds more than the other bike, just really struggled getting the flow down. There would be sections where I could get the flow down. This 390 really seemed to ride it like a trophy truck, just really power through stuff and, and blast through things. When it's wet like this, that's tough. Here's a good example of what you need to do. You just like keep pushing. I'm sure guys will laugh at this because I'm going like 10 miles an hour. But for me, this is how the bike should be ridden. And it was just really tough to ride it that quick today. The river loop is notoriously wet. This is one of the worst sections coming up here. It's not terrible, but it's not dry either. I mean, through a lot of this section, it was kind of more like riding to survive than pushing through. And, uh, oh, here's... <laughs> uh, that's a super wet log, and you can see when I, when I hit it with the front wheel, <laughs> the front wheel slides to the left like four inches, which when you're on a 235-pound bike as opposed to a 200-pound bike, it's a much more exciting and for me, it's a lot more difficult. Good? Good. So between the conditions and my skill level, I just couldn't ride this thing like the trophy truck it needs to be ridden like, at least not today. And when you're tentative, you tend to go down. That's called foreshadowing. Uh, I had another excuse too, that wasn't the only one. I also was having trouble seeing the trail. So for example, that boom, that rock right there, it's probably about six inches tall. I didn't see it until I was right on top of it. Rich and I talked about this. We think it's because it was so slick you tended to focus right in front of your wheel. That's just bad. You can't see what's coming if you're not looking at it. Sound like Yogi Berra.
slippery. It is. I just lost my front end right there. I guess I'm doing pretty good today. I've had, uh, well, one crash. It was almost like just laying down at a slow motion. <laughs> Thing that occurred to us after the ride it's been so dry this year so dry like uh, record lack of rainfall that we're totally out of practice on this wet stuff usually it's like this for half the season uh, and we're I think just out of practice and it shows me here at just about every opportunity trying to get the momentum going trying to open the gas and, and bring up the speed it's just very difficult every time I do that it seems like I get a little bit out of control because I don't know how to ride I was riding like such a weenie is because unpredictably you'd get pointed off into the woods by the roots. So there's little V of roots come up here, I'll do a super slow mo. It pops up out of nowhere, right about here, there's the V. So in slow mo, there's the V, pops my wheel to the right and sends me straight into those three very large trees. <laughs> that is like disaster, narrowly averted. Uh, it wasn't all five mile an hour stuff almost going into the woods. I did a whip section here that was pretty good. Kind of getting the speed up and learning how to ride these things with a little more confidence. I didn't uh, bite the triple clamp this time, which is good. Although when I watched it back, I was uh, humiliated to see that after all that section, I come to this five inch log and have to <laughs> actually come to a stop and get over it one wheel at a time. Sigh. One thing that I hear from time to time on the 390 is this kind of mystery, like, clacking, slapping noise. You can hear it a little bit here. I don't know if it's like a loose piece of bodywork. I don't think it's the chain, maybe. Somebody, please, put me out of my misery and tell me what that is.
sometimes when you lack skill, you just kind of launch your bike at stuff and hope for the best. And when you do that, invariably, you rack your balls. break here to uh, let Rich go first so I could film him and uh, as you can see I was able to stay with him for uh, yeah, about 50 meters you know maybe 40 meters oh well so every time we do the river loop we have to face the impossible climb it's only like 30 feet long but after this uh, sharp left up here, gun it, and uh, you get uh, stuck on this uh, route right here every time. The only good thing about it, which is really none, is the fact that I get to practice waiting my back tire to get out of situation. You know what I mean? Well, it was, uh, thanks. In my mind, I saw myself going up over these rocks and right up here. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you should do. That was in my mind. So yeah, if he were to come up there and then just like fucking bah! Well, I'm sure you can't see it, of course, but the amount of lateral movement from the front. Anatomy of a Breakdown, it's actually a four-part series, conclusion coming soon. Right. I hate those too.
I feel compelled to apologize at this point. I don't know, to, to, to Beta, to Rich, to, to you guys having to endure this. Oh, they say it builds character, but man, I was not happy. Even after all that nonsense, it's not like the trail all of a sudden gets really easy. It continues to be really tough. Wet and slick. This rock ledge here is about two feet tall, although well, you can't quite tell in the video. It was a struggle, or as some people would say, a struggle. You know what that wasn't? Fun. I had a mental breakdown. Welcome to my world. Okay. All right. This section of the river loop, it's the very end of the loop and probably the most technical. These rocks are really big and there's just, there's no good way to get through them if you have my level of skill. When I get really good, I think I'll just jump over all this stuff. And I'm like, is my clutch slipping? Like what? No, you're just a terrible rider. You need to like <laughs> ride more. By this point, yeah, I was just frustrated and uh, a little all over the place. But coming up here, the trail dried out a little bit, got to open it up, and all of a sudden I felt better. Yay, dirt bike riding. Also, this whoop section was pretty cool. I felt like a real pro. <laughs> you want to go through to uh, BT? No, we can't. I'm okay. All right, we do BT. So we agreed to go straight to the BT trail, which is another single track loop without stopping back at the truck. Rich offered that. I think, as you could tell, I was decompensating. But I think we made the right call. Of course, it wasn't all peaches and cream. Muffler's hot. God damn. 
Beat me up today, bro. Thank you, guys. Yeah, I was lucky to get out of that one without uh, any injury except for a burned bicep, <laughs> which I uh, unwisely placed onto the muffler. That thing is hot. Sorry about that. I ate complete shit on that big, those big fat fucking roots, like just around the corner back there. Yeah. Yeah, I came to a complete stop. And then I heard you in the back. Oh yeah. I fucking, yeah. We're flying. Well, I feel like we're flying. Probably not. Part of the trail gets enough sun, I guess, and it's high enough up that it was nice and dry, relatively dry. Ah, oh, it felt so good to be out here just cruising. I mean, it's still slow because I was completely exhausted, but it's fun. Yeah, this is definitely more uh, 390 territory. It's kind of flowy, a little more open stuff. Uh, even I could get on the gas out here. Ah, and for that, it is a wonderful bike. Like when I got into that sand, I, I like I was almost on my ass, was almost on that rear fender. Like, yeah. cause I came in over the bars, and then it just was like, brrr, and I was like, fucking just lean way back. Way and back. I know it's like the further I lean back, I feel like the better I am over those roots and the rocks. And then when I'm like in the tighter stuff, I like throw my weight forward to get it to bite. Yeah, to get it to bite. Because if I'm back, the front end washes. Yeah. It's in my head though. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay, so I think we're back to uh, kind of like a normal ride instead of a punishing wet ride on a bike that's a little too heavy for me and has too much power. But maybe I spoke too soon. That actually wasn't too bad. And then, uh, oh, what do we got here? Rich is getting a little PT in on the side. Okay, everything okay, buddy? Oh, thumbs up. <laughs> okay, off we go. Up the clutch. That's gonna be difficult. Ugh. 
Yeah, so it was basically normal service res resumed. I, this is super steep here and I totally chickened out. In the background you can see Rich is wiping out and I'm basically like rolling my bike down with the equipment like a staircase. Uh, it was bad. But uh, Rich does not usually take that long to get up, so I think he might have hurt himself a little bit. Looks like he, uh, he, he gets going here and then, oh, this is my starter adventure. Check this out. Alright, so eventually the thing starts, thank God, because it's almost impossible to kick. It's going to take some investigation to figure out what that was. was a battle right to the end. But like, it doesn't get any easier. <laughs> I, I'd only get more and more tired and I don't get any better as a rider. Maybe next week. My starter wouldn't start. I didn't turn over at all. You must have been like, fuck me. I was like, wow, I'll meet Nicole some other time. <laughs> so of course as we made our way back to the parking lot I was reminded that a bad difficult day dirt bike riding is still a fantastic day. I really did enjoy it. Uh, it's great to get out with Rich. And when I got home, got the beta cleaned up, she looks so sweet and innocent. This is how she tricks me. She's going to get me out there again, I know it. See you soon guys. Hope everyone's doing well. Stay safe. See you for the next one.